Hello everybody. Today I would like to speak a little bit about forwarding architecture. We will discuss a little bit process switching, fast switching, six express forwarding, forwarding information base and adjacency table. I will try to explain ternary content addressable memory, centralized forwarding, distributed forwarding, software SEF, hardware SEF, distributed hardware, hardware SEF, stateful switch over SDM templates, and also benefits of the SEF. Let's get started. Most Cisco routers use Cisco EOS software to perform packet switching functions. When EOS was first developed, only a single switching mechanism existed. This method, known as process switching, was very simple and not very efficient. As network speeds and demands for higher performance grew, enhancements were made to Cisco EOS software that provided improved methods of switching. Specialized hardware components were also developed and incorporated into certain routers to improve forwarding performance. Modern Cisco routers switch between thousands of packets per second to hundreds of millions of packets per second. Dedicated hardware-based forwarding engines, mainly implemented as application-specific integrated circuits (ISIC), are necessary to achieve the highest forwarding rates. Other parameters such as input-output memory, speed, and bus performance can have a big impact on switching performance. The challenge is to create the highest possible switching performance within the limits of available ISIC, CPU, input-output bus, memory technology, and cost. The switch method used by various Cisco routers to achieve this race depends on the specific routing platforms. There are three switching methods of available in Cisco EOS today. First one is switch, uh, process switching. Sorry, Packets are processed and forwarded directly by the router CPU. The second one, fast switching, where packets are forwarded in the CPU interrupt using cache entries created by process switching. And the last one, Cisco Express forwarding, where packets are forwarded using a pre-computed and well-optimized version of the routing table. Each of these three switching methods is reviewed in general detail next. Uh, the intent of this review is not to des describe all the optimizations and mechanisms used by each in forwarding packets. The intent is to investigate how these three switching methods deal with packets in the various IP uh, traffic planes and to see what impact this has on router performance and network stability and security. So first is the process switching, which is the oldest, slowest and the most basic switching mechanism, also referred to as software switching or slow pass. In the process switching, the general purpose CPU on the router is making the forwarding decision at the process level with the help of IP input process. Even though this mechanism is the old slowest, there are still cases when the self switching cannot process packet and put it, put it to the process switching. These cases are when we have packets destined to the router itself, when we have packets that are very complex for hardware to handle, packets with IP options, and when we have packets that require additional information, for example, ARP. To display the number of punted packets, use the following commands. This command is show IP self switching statistic. It will show you general number of punted packets and also we can use additional uh, option feature. Uh, with this feature it shows per feature switching statistic more detailed. To enable uh, process switching use no IP road cache. So how does process switching work? Um, here you can see a simplified representation of packet uh, forwarding during uh, process switching. You can see ingress interface, you can see data plane, you can see egress interface and control plane. Uh, you can also find IP input process which helps CPU to make forwarding decision. So the process switching starts when the interface processor detects a packet on the network media and transfers it into input output memory. The interface processor creates a receive interrupt for the CPU, alerting that there is the ingress packet in input-output memory waiting for processing. EOS updates inbound packet counters. 
then the central processor determines what type of packet this is and places it on the input queue of the appropriate process and the interrupt is released. Uh, the type of IP packet can be uh, determined, for example, by encapsulation type or network layer header. When the scheduler runs, the next time it discovers the packet in the input queue of the IP input process and schedules its execution. When IP input uh, runs, it consults a uh, routing information base for the next hop address and output interface. Next, IP route consults the ARP cache to find the MAC address associated with the next hop address. The IP input process builds new and rewrites the layer to header of the packet. Then the packet is placed uh, to the output queue of the correct outbound interface. The packet is copied from the output put queue of the outbound interface to the transmit queue of the outbound interface. If there is any outbound quality service, it takes place between these two queues. The output interface processor senses the buffered packet on its transmit queue and transfers the packet onto the network media. The main processor is interrupted to indicate that the packet has been transmitted. EOS updates its outbound packet counter and frees the space in the input-output memory formerly occupied by the packet. That's it. Process switching is completed. The process switching has also some disadvantages. The key disadvantage of the process switching is its very slow speed because it requires a routing table lookup for every packet. If routing table grows, then therefore the time required to perform a lookup also grows, which increases total switching time. Recursive rows require additional lookups in the routing table, increasing the lookup time. Longer lookup times also increase the main processor utilization, an effect multiplied by the incoming packet rate. Also, this effect may not be noticeable on very small uh, networks, with few roads. Large networks can have hundreds or even thousands of roads. For these networks, routing table size can significantly impact main processor utilization and routing latency. Another major factor affecting process switching speed is in memory data transfer time. On some platforms, process switching requires received packets to be copied from input-output memory to another memory area before they can be switched. After the routing process finishes, uh, the packet must be copied back to input-output memory before being transmitted. Memory data copy operations are very CPU intensive, so on these platforms, process switching can be a very poor performer. Fast switching. Fast switching is a software enhanced process switching which speeds up the performance of the packets by using the forwarding pass. F fast switching uses a fast switching cache to store information about packet flows. The fast switching cache is consulted first in each forwarding attempt instead of using the more expensive process switching lookup procedures. If there is no information in the fast switching cache, the packet is forwarded. Uh, process switched and forwarded to the exit interface. The flow information for the packet is also stored in the fast switching cache. If another packet going to the same destination arrives on an interface, the next hop information uh, is uh, in the cache is reused without CPU intervention. Sometimes fast switching is referred to as fast cache switching. To enable fast switching, uh, the following command should be entered under the interface configuration mode IP road cache so how does fast switching work here we have a um, simplified representation of packets forwarding during the fast switching uh, and we can see that uh, the only difference from fa process switching is that we have fast forward cache in the data plane 
The fast switching starts in exactly the same way as process switching when the interface processor detects a packet on the network media and transfers it into input output memory. The interface processor creates a receive interrupt for the CPU alerting that there is the ingress packet in input output memory waiting for processing. EOS updates inbound packet counters. The EOS software inspects the packet and determines what type of packet this is. To determine the type of packet, we can use, for example, encapsulation type and network layer header. Now, instead of placing the packet on the input queue for the CPU processing, Interrupt Software consults the fast cache for an entry matching the destination address. If there is an entry in the fast cache, then Interrupt Software retrieves the layer 2 MAC address of the next scope uh, and outbound information out of the fast cache. Interrupt software builds the new layer 2 header for the packet uh, on the base of retrieved information. Interrupt software alerts the outbound interface. The output interface processor senses the buffered packet on its transmit queue and transfers the packet onto the network media. The main processor is interrupted to indicate that the packet has been transmitted. EOS updates its outbound packet counter and frees the space in input-output memory formerly occupied by the packet. Fast switching has also some disadvantages. Uh, for example, first packet toward the new destination must be process switched to build the fast switching cache. Fast switching cache entries must be timed out periodically to prevent stale information from being used in switching. Any ARP entry or the routing table changes cause cleaning of some portion of the fast switching cache and waiting for a process switch traffic to rebuild it. A wasting of space because rebuilt MAC address headers for each possible destination needs to be stored. And the last switching mechanism is Cisco Express Forwarding. This is a Cisco proprietary switching mechanism which uses cache entries to perform its switching operations entirely during the road processor interrupt. Ceph uh, pre-builds its forwarding information base table directly from the routing table and pre-builds the adjacency table from the ARP cache. Once set tables are pre-built, the CPU on the router processor is never directly involved in the forwarding packets. This is a default switching mechanism for all Cisco platforms using ISIC's application-specific integrated circuits and NPUs, network processing units. On the software-based routers, the general-purpose CPU is in charge of Ceph switching or software Ceph. On the hardware-based routers, Ceph switching is using routing engines implemented in ISIC, TCAM, ternary content addressable memory, and NPU, hardware Ceph. To enable Ceph, use IP Ceph in global configuration mode. Forwarding information base and adjacency table. Forwarding information base uh, or FIB is a component of Cisco Express forwarding and it is conceptually similar to specially constructed routing table or information base, which is stored in multi-way three data structure 250-way uh, MTRI and contains next hop IP address for each destination. FIP contains all routes for, from the main routing table and it is synchronized. Whenever changes appear in network topology, the IP routing table is updated and those changes are reflected in FIP. The FIP eliminates the need for the road cache maintenance associated with fast forwarding. There are also links to adjacency table in each FIP entry, which helps to support load balancing and equal cost multipass. Adjacency table is also known as adjacency information base and contains a directly connected next hop IP addresses and their corresponding next hop MAC addresses and the egress interfaces MAC address. Layer 2 addresses information is obtained from ARP cache. Ceph uses adjacency table prepend a layer 2 addressing information. 
the adjacency table is populated with data from ARP table or other layer 2 protocol tables. So this uh, picture uh, represents a simplified scheme of uh, forming a forward information base and adjacency table. We can see how IP routed table is formed based on, for example, BGP table, which uh, fields are transferred to IP routing table and uh, which fields are dependent from each one's in IP routing table itself, and then which fields uh, from IP routing table are synchronized or transferred to forwarding information base. And then adjacency table is formed basically on ARP cache table and some other layer 2 uh, protocol tables. Adjacency table entries. In addition to the host route adjacencies, which are used for directly connected IP address, typically it is the next hop address of the router on the point-to-point -point link, other types of adjacencies are used for certain exception conditions. For example, null adjacency indicates that packets should be switched to the null interface that can be used as an effective form of filtering. Glean adjacency. When a router is connected to a multi-access medium, it maintains prefix for the subnet. Adjacency indicates that next hop address should be directly connected, but there is no MAC address available, so the CEF needs to request an ARP entry for the specific prefix. When MAC address is received, the adjacency entry for the host is built. Punt adjacency indicates that the packet needs special handling and it should be switched by the next switching method, fast switching uh, or process switching. Discard adjacency, when packets are discarded. And the last one, drop adjacency, packets are dropped but the prefix is checked. Ternary content addressable memory or TCAM is an enhanced extension of CAM architecture. It is designed for high speed searching and support three memory states 0, 1, and X. X state is also known as don't care bit or wild card. Uh, TCAM gives more flexibility in performing searches based on pattern matching. TCAM is most useful for building tables for searching on longest matches such as IP routing tables organized by IP prefixes. It allows to identify layer 2 and 3 source or destination addresses, protocols, cost markings. The TCAM entries are stored in value mask result format, where value field indicates their source destination addresses and other relevant protocol information which has to match. The mask field indicates the value bits of interest which should be queried. The result field represents action to be taken with match on the value and mask after lookup operation. Switches can perform multiple lookups in multiple distant TCAM regions simultaneously, which allows to enable additional hardware switching features as cause and IP ICL processing without performance degradation. Centralized forwarding. For centralized forwarding architecture, all packet switching decisions are made by a road processor. Centralized forwarding is best solution when line cards are not available, when features to be used are not compatible with self switching or if there is non-distributed platform. In this architecture, the packet is received on ingress line card and transmitted to the forwarding engine, where headers of the packet are being examined and the forwarding decision outward on egress line card is taken. Then the packet is sent to the egress line card to be forwarded. For example, on this simplified picture, we can see ingress line card where we receive our packet. Then it goes through switch fabric and forwarded engine receives this packet and the um, forwarding engine makes forwarding decision and transmit uh, packet to egress line and it, uh, it transmitted to the line. Distributed forwarding. Distributed CEF or DCEF mode runs for additional scalability on certain platforms by spreading processing tasks across two or more line cards. When DCEF is used, each line card maintains identical copy of FIP and adjacency table. The line cards perform the express forwarding between port adapters, which relieves routing processor from performing switching operations. 
When a packet is received on the ingress line card, it is transmitted to the local forwarding engine, which examines the headers of the packet and determines the outbound interface. If the outbound interface is local, the packet is being forwarded out of a local interface. If the outbound interface is located on different line card, then the packet is being sent across switch fabric to ingress line card without involving routing processor. On this picture, we have a simplified representation of distributed forwarding. We have two line cards on our switch. And for example, um, ingress line card receives the packet on its inbound interface. The packet is being forwarded to local forwarding engine, which makes forwarding decision. In this example, forwarding decision was to transfer packet to outbound interface on different line card. The packet is being transferred through fabri switch fabric to egress line card and being forwarded out of outbound interface on this egress line card. For example, uh, forwarding engine found, found out that uh, outbound interface is located on the same line card, then the packet is being transferred out of this outbound interface on the same line card. Software Ceph. How does it work? Ceph switching begins exactly like other uh, switching methods. First, the network interface hardware receives the packet and transfers it into input-output memory. The network interface interrupts the software, alerting it to the ingress packet waiting in input-output memory for processing. EOS updates its inbound packet counters. The EOS interrupt software inspects the packet to check if it is the IP packet. This check can be done by encapsulation type or by network layer header. Instead of placing the packet on the input queue for the CPU processing, the interrupt software consults forward information base for an entry, which is matching destination address. If interrupt software finds the entry, it retrieves the pre-built layer to header information from the adjacency table and builds the packet for forwarding. The interrupt software alerts the outbound interface. Then the outbound interface hardware centers the packet, removes it from the input-output memory, Q, uh, Q and transmits it to the network. If the destination address is not found in the forwarding information base, instead of reverting to uh, fast switching and process switching, Ceph just drops the packet, which causes ICMP destination unreachable type 3 generation. Ceph pre-builds the forwarding information base on the routing table. Those, uh, regardless of switching mechanisms, if no entry exists in the forwarding information base, then a valid destination prefix will never be found. This is one of the best features of Ceph. No processor load is expended for unresolved destinations. Here we have a um, simplified representation of uh, software Ceph um, mechanism. And as you can see, we have ingress interface, we have data plane where we have our Ceph uh, with forward information base and adjacency table. We have CPU with an IP input process, routing table, ARP, and um, uh, this is uh, these are located on in the control plane. And we also have egress interface. In addition to uh, all this process that I've described uh, just uh, just a few seconds ago, uh, I, I want to add that uh, some packets are being pointed to CPU for processing. And uh, those packets are, for example, packets destined to the router itself, packets that are very complex for a hardware to handle, or packets that require additional information, for example, ARP. Hardware itself. Hardware Ceph is using ISICs for switching packets with very high rate, but these ISICs are very expensive for designing, troubleshooting and producing. Another disadvantage with ISICs is that they are very limited in functionality, as they are hardwired to perform specific tasks. To overcome a uh, mentioned disadvantage, um, routers are using NPUs, which are programmable. The main advantage of distributed hardware Ceph is in packet throughput performance, which is due to offloading of packet switching responsibilities to the line cards. In distributed hardware, the Ceph structures are downloaded to the CPU of the line cards and ISICs to participate in packet switching, which in turn allows to perform packet switching at the, at the distributed level and increase packet throughput of the router.
Hardware-based platforms don't use safe switching for packet switching. Software safe is used to program hardware safe. This picture illustrates distributed hardware safe, and as you can see, it is very similar, conceptually similar to distributed forwarding. Uh, each line card has a um, local forwarding engine with uh, hardware safe and uh, software safe, and software safe is used to program hardware safe. Uh, when, for example, uh, ingress line card receives a ingress packet. Uh, and the forwarding engine makes decision that uh, this packet needs to be forwarded to different ingress line card to outbound interface of this uh, egress line card. Then uh, the packet is forwarded through switch fabric to this egress line card and uh, to be forwarded out of the outbound interface of this egress line card. But if the forwarding engines finds out that the um, outbound interface is local interface it just forwards this packet out of this uh, local outbound interface stateful switch over stateful switch over or sso is redundancy feature that allows routing processors to synchronize router configuration and control plane state information and provides protection for network edge devices with dual route processors that represent a single point of failure in the network design because the sso maintains stateful feature information user sessions information is maintained during a switch over and line cards continue forwarding traffic with no loss of sessions providing improved network availability sso provides a faster switch over than road processor redundancy by fully initializing and fully configuring the standby road processor and by synchronizing state information which can re can reduce the time required for routing protocols to converge mirroring information between road processors is called checkpointing network stability may be improved with the reduction in the number of road flaps had been created when routers in the network failed and lost their routing tables when routing table is clear, the safety entries are purged and traffic is no longer routed until the network topology forwarding table is reprogrammed and topology is relearned. To continue forwarding through a uh, road processor failure, enabled high availability feature non-stop forwarding or non-stop routing inform the router to maintain the safety entries for a short duration of time to continue forwarding packets. SDM templates. System resources for the specific features can be optimized using SDM templates depending on how the switch is used in the network. So why do we need SDM templates? For example, the memory used for TCAM is limited and allocated statically during the boot up. If a section of hardware resources gets full, all processing overflow goes to the CPU. That's why we need to uh, optimize system resources with SDM templates. The following templates can be used for optimization. For example, access. The access template maximizes system resources for access control lists to accommodate a large number of ACLs. Default. The default template gives balance to all functions. Routing. The routing template maximizes system resources for IPv4 unicast routing, typically required for a router or an aggregator in the center of a network. VLAN. The VLAN template disables routing and supports the maximum number of unicast MAC addresses. It would typically be selected for a layer 2 switch. SDM templates can be configured with global configuration command. SDM prefer and then we have options depending on which template, SDM template we want to use. For example, VLAN, access, default or routing. After this command, switch needs to be restarted. To view current SDM template, the following command can be used, show SDM prefer. And the one more note, uh, if you have stacked switches, all of them need to have the same SDM template. Okay, let's point out a few benefits of Ceph. And the first one is improved performance. Because Ceph is using less CPU processing time than fast switching, the more CPU processing power can be dedicated to such features like cost or, for example, encryption. Scalability. 
Ceph offers full switching capacity at each line card when distributed Ceph is enabled. Uh, resiliency. Ceph offers very high level of switching consistency and stability in large dynamic networks. Because the FIB lookup table contains all roads that exist in routing table, it eliminates road cache maintenance and fast switch or process switch scenario. Here you can see a few very useful references that I've used during uh, studying this topic. They can be useful for you as well. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you like this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Uh, I will make more videos in the future. I hope to see you very soon. And ciao, ciao.